So when I first broke into IT, that is I got my first real adult job that paid money, that initial job hunt took way too long. And after I finally got the job, it, it, to be honest, felt like dumb luck at the time. For years after getting hired for that job, I was super worried that if I got let go or fired or something like this, I, I wouldn't be able to find another similar job. And I was super scared of being poor again. So I, I kind of did a whole bunch of stuff to try to prevent that. And in an attempt to make myself super employable, like if I lost my job, I ended up studying a whole bunch, getting a bunch of certifications, job hopping a lot. I did a whole bunch of interviews. And in the end, I ended up creating what's called the employability framework, which is what you're looking at on the screen here. You might have heard me talk about the 12 pillars of employment on my channel before. I basically refined that into the employability framework, just FYI. This framework is super, super useful and it really puts things into perspective for you. And I've used it to basically go from zero, like nothing essentially, to a base salary of 180K, at least in the corporate world. And I do think it's worth noting that while using this framework, I've never actually been laid off or fired or let go or anything like this from a job. I've done a whole bunch of job hopping. I've worked a whole bunch of different jobs and it's never taken me longer than probably like a month to find a decent job. And I still get recruiters messaging me probably every day for 100K plus work. Some people might be thinking like, oh, that's like survivorship bias or you're lucky or whatever. But yeah, it's like kind of true. There is luck involved with everything in the world. But this employability framework, this is basically a guide to create your luck to stay employable. Like that's what it's for. And reaching this level of job security is actually much easier than you think, even in a quote unquote bad economy, right? And I've, I've used this same framework to help thousands of people on my channel as well as in both my courses. And it, it simply works. It just works. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually use the employability framework. I'm going to definitely make it make sense. And this is applicable for any career, almost like almost any job. It's not just IT. You can take it and apply it to most disciplines, right? So just keep that in mind. You've probably come across a lot of Reddit posts where people are like, oh, I applied to like 400 places and I have a bachelor's degree and I, I can't find a job. And these people, like they'll tend to blame the economy or a job market saturation or something like this. And while this is true, like a highly employable person or being highly employable will really offset the burden of a poor economy in most cases. You just have to be better than the next person. And it's not that hard to do because the average person and doesn't really plan for their job security and build out this like structured thing to make sure that their skills and everything are like up to par. This is not how most people operate. It kind of seems like these days people still think job hunting is like taking like, you know, whatever your old version of your resume is and just blasting it out to a whole bunch of places and, and saying a prayer and hoping you get hired. And when people do find success, it often kind of boils down to their own individual experience. Like, they might say things like, oh, I didn't get my job until I got my degree, or I only got hired after I got, you know, XYZ certification, or it's all about who you know, not what you know, like my friend got me the job and experience is the most important thing. And these are all valid things, but they're not like 100% true for 100% of jobs. It, it kind of really depends on where you're applying and who's reviewing your application. So to become and stay highly employable across a broad range of employers, when you don't know who cares about what, you kind of have to consider all of these things and look at yourself holistically and kind of see if there's any gaps, like any areas that you could touch up on. And that is exactly what the employability framework is for. So generally speaking, if we zoom way out in order to get a job, you only have to really worry about two things. Like the first thing being getting an interview and the second thing is passing the interview. All of your efforts, like everything you do to become and stay highly employable needs to address either one or both of these things. This framework is effective for most professions, right? But because I've worked in IT and like my, my thing is like kind of IT, I'm just gonna give some examples and talk about it a bit in terms of IT. So back to the framework, getting an interview, passing the interview, and then you have a job. So you might be saying like, okay, well, how do you get an interview? And you get an interview by submitting a large volume of very high quality applications. So you might be asking like, how do you create high quality applications? So high quality applications, of course, you need to use a high quality resume, which I'll get to in a second. You need to reach out to at least one individual on LinkedIn per application. And you should be recording everything in an application tracking spreadsheet so you can kind of keep track of where you applied and who you reached out to. Now you might be asking yourself like, okay, like how do I create a high quality resume? So I'll put a link in the description to a resume I actually use in both of my courses. I consider this a high quality resume, but your resume should have the following qualities like, 
it, it really needs to be easily digestible by humans. Like just remember humans don't really like reading, especially people in HR who are reviewing a bunch of applications. Your resume needs to be readable and parsable by an ATS, that's an application tracking system or like, you know, automated resume scanner. It needs to be completely consistent with font, tenses, tab stops, margins, and all of that kind of stuff. You need to have zero grammar or other spelling mistakes, etc. Um, it needs to contain appropriate sections with achievements. So like education, certification, portfolio, and experience for IT at least. And it should contain some quantifiable experience as well. And I do want to say before you're like, well, how do you get experience without like having a job first? Like for almost every single profession, you can absolutely create your own experience in some way, shape or form, right? So in, in my IT and cyber course, I just create a whole bunch of labs and I have the students go through it. And then we create a portfolio at the end to kind of showcase like what they actually did right on the computer. Um, if you're like, you know, I'm just making this up, right? Like if you're a plumber or an electrician or something, I'm sure you can make something and, you know, make a video explaining like plumber theory and, you know, make some like project where there's like, I don't know, a valve and like you can make water come out. I don't know what, what plumbers do, but you can almost always make some kind of experience and showcase it to employers some way. If you don't have anything, you, you must do this, right? It really helps distinguish you from your peers and it's, it's a really powerful thing to do. Portfolio is also super important as well. It's just like a way to showcase your experience that you made for yourself. You can do this with almost any profession. Just get a bunch of media, whether it's like pictures or whatever it is like that you do in your profession, organize them in a nice way and just put it online, make a short link, put that on your resume. Congrats, you've distinguished yourself from your peers. Again, it's highly recommend you do this. So again, feel free to grab the resume template in the description, make a copy of it, make your own, you know, fill it out in the way that we kind of talked about in this video. And congrats, you can now get interviews at least. Now, the only thing we have to worry about is actually passing the interviews that we're getting. So you might be asking yourself like, okay, like how do we pass an interview? So to pass an interview, we can work on developing the interview skill box. For myself, as well as both of my courses, I kind of recommend doing the following things to kind of boost your interviewing skills. So basically, um, I recommend using ChatGPT in the job description to construct at least 50 relevant interview questions. Watch this video for more on that. I kind of go into depth on that. Um, practice articulating really succinct answers. Like people tend to like go on and on during interviews because they're nervous or whatever. Don't do that. Practice articulating answers in star format. That is situation, task, action, and result. You can Google it um, or, or watch this video, right? Uh, practice speaking without using filler words. So try to not to say like, um, like blah, blah, blah. Like it helps to record yourself and watch it again. And then you see like how like poorly you're speaking. Um, me doing YouTube kind of forced me to do this and it, it helped me to get way better at talking. I'm still not the best, right? But it's way better than, you know, five years ago, for instance. You can continue to boost your interview yeah. skill stat by addressing your self-presentation yeah. and a technical ability stats as well. So self-presentation, this just basically is how you appear in front of the interviewers. You can basically use this desirability yeah. framework, which I haven't talked about yet on this channel like at all. I'll make like a whole video about this, but all of the green stats in here, make sure those are like as squared away as they possibly can be because it really helps, right? There's, if you Google like halo effect, right? Um, the better looking you are, kind of the, the better people perceive you and like the, the better they treat you essentially. So you wanna like make sure that is as squared away as you, as you can, right? You wanna be as good as you can be reasonably. And technical ability, this just refers to your skill or ability and knowledge in your given domain, like where you want to stay highly employable. Um, it, the way you boost this like depends um, for the field that you work in, but for IT and cybersecurity, generally speaking, we want to like learn a bit of theory, but most of like the, the main way we boost our technical, technical ability is practicing like doing labs and stuff if we don't have a normal job, right? So a lot of labs, like for example, in both my courses, I have a, a whole bunch of labs in each course, like really high quality labs. And it's important to do them like many, many times, you know, like three, four, five, six times the same lab, depending on how big it is, because it kind of solidifies it in your brain and makes it like much easier to talk about things when you actually go to interview. And then finally, to really polish your technical ability before the interview, like when you get an interview, like take that job description for the interview and dump it into ChatGPT and just 
tell it like, give me 50 sample interview questions for this job. And you can say like, give me 50 hard ones, give me 50 easy ones, etc. And then you can even ask it to answer the questions it created as well. This is just kind of like a final polish before you actually like go into the interview the next day. Um, it will help you kind of um, anticipate anything they might ask based on the job description. It's something I, I highly, highly recommend. And I, I guarantee most people aren't going to do this, at least, you know, for the near future anyways. And if you can do everything we talked about in both the get interview and pass interview phases, like congratulations, you're now highly employable, or at least you're better than the next person who no doubt didn't do all of that stuff we just talked about. And I do want to talk about social network a bit. Um, I, I, I don't like to talk about it because uh, a lot of people like, you know, they don't want to, they don't have a network, right? And it's kind of hard to build one, right? It's just hard to do that. Um, but I do want I do want to talk about it. So basically, if you look at the employability framework, social network in red, it's pointing at the, these different areas with like a red line. Basically, you can bypass like big chunks of stuff. Like you can just get an interview if you have the right network. Like your friend introduces you to you know a, someone, right? Or if you you get into the interview by yourself. Um, and somebody like knows you because you're like, oh, you know, like Jessica, whatever, I'm friends with her. And then they just like, they just like hire you based on that, right? That's completely possible. Or you just like outright get a job without interviewing or doing anything, right? Like my last job, I didn't have to interview for it or, or do anything. I just got, I just got the job and it was 180K. Um, it's because I knew the client where I was working and I also knew like the recruiter as well. So they just like, they just like just hired me without me doing anything. So I'm not telling you to like go out and, you know, you know, make a bunch of connections or something. I'm just saying like, be aware of it. And when you actually get your job and start working, be like, um, is my opinion again, be really nice to people. Always do like a really, really good job as good as you can. And when you quit, um, if your man, if your manager's, you know, a decent person, try to quit, you know, in as nice as way as possible. So you can kind of maintain those connections. That's basically what I've did. I've done. And I, I'm not a social person like at all. Right. You don't see me like even collaborating with other YouTubers, like at all, almost, almost. Right. Um, I'm not social, but I have like a, a decent social network just because like I perform well at work or I, I try hard, I should say, and I'm nice to people. That's all you have to do. And your, your network will develop over time. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's super, super powerful. Um, just, you know, develop it organically over time and you, you're going to be good with the framework and your social network. Oh my God, you'll never, you will never have to worry. Right. And if you want to take it a step further, like you really want to be highly employable, um, you can do what I did and take this framework and either apply it to like two to three different disciplines or two to three different jobs inside of your chosen discipline. So for me, um, I basically took this framework and applied it generally to IT, to cybersecurity and to software engineering. And I've worked in all three of those areas, right. In my career. And I'm, I don't, I don't worry anymore about finding work because I, I like, I don't keep it up to date, like as much as I should, like, I don't sit around like practicing interviews all the time, but, um, I, I've applied this framework to three different areas and I just, um, I don't worry about like, you know, I don't worry about finding a job again. And it's kind of a nice feeling because you can use that mental real estate to worry about something else if you want. If you're interested in working in IT or cybersecurity, I have two courses built on the employability framework. So if you're brand new, I recommend checking out the IT course. If you already work in IT or you're kind of technical already, go ahead and check out the cybersecurity course. A bunch of labs in there, walk you through like the whole resume and portfolio creation, interview process, basically everything we talked about in this video to help you like get and stay highly employable in IT or cybersecurity. Use the framework, stay highly employable, and we will see you in the next video.